from Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Summit New York City 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Oh, and welcome to the Big Apple. AWS Summit kicking off here at the Javits Convention Center, New York, New York, along with Stu Miniman. I'm John Walls. Welcome to theCUBE as we continue our coverage here. Really, I feel like this is ongoing, Stu, as far as what we're doing with AWS as the Public Sector Summit. AWS from the outside in for a very long time. So tell me what you make of this. I mean, a regional show, we probably have four or 5,000 folks here, good turnout. Um, what's the vibe you got? What's the feel you got? Yeah, John, I was really interested because we've covered a few of the regional summits, but the first one that I've attended, uh, I'm actually already has been starting to plan for AWS reInvent, which is the mm -hmm. big show in November. Uh, expecting probably around 50,000 people at that show. Big show. But I think four years ago, four and a half years ago, when I went to the first AWS Summit uh, in Las Vegas, uh, it was about the size of what this show is. So Adrian Cockroft got up on stage, said there were about 20,000 people registered. Of course, registered doesn't mean that they're right. all here. Right. Uh, a lot right. of people I know watching right. the live stream, uh, as well as, you know, it's free to attend. So if I'm in New York City, there's just a few people in New York that care about tech probably, so right. maybe they'll pop in sometime for today. But in the keynote, there's definitely a few thousand people. Uh, it's a good sized expo hall here. Um, you know, this could be a, you know, five or 6,000 person event uh, for the size of the expo hall that they have here, and the Javits Center mm -hmm. uh, can really hold some big, uh, you know, big activity here. So, uh, Im impressive at scope, uh, because you know, Amazon and the cloud is still uh, in early days, uh, as Jeff Bezos says, uh, there is no you know, day two, we're always day one, and right. what's going on. Uh, went through a lot of announcements, a lot of momentum, a lot of revenue. Uh, in this big cloud thing. Well, they were talking about, you talked about Adrian too, and we'll, we'll get to his uh, keynote comments in a little bit, talking about revenue growth still in the uptick, right? Year to year, 42%, so still going there. But then on the other side, you do see some writing going on that, that maybe the uptick's slowing down just a hair as far as cloud deployment goes. Yeah, uh, th that's a great thing, because you know, we're all staring at the numbers and it, it's no longer, Amazon right now is not growing 75, 80%, as opposed to, the company's trying to catch up to them, like Microsoft mm -hmm. is growing at you know, more that north Tri of 75 digit, right? uh, big numbers. Per percent. But Amazon, if you look at infrastructure as a service, is you know, the largest out there, uh, you know, wait, what was it? It was a $16 billion run rate, looking at the last 12 months, uh, looking back, mm -hmm. still over 40% growth rate. So yes, is the growth slowing down a little bit, but that's just because they're now at a big number, so it's a little mm -hmm. tougher. Uh, but they keep adding services, they keep adding users, uh, some you know, big users up on stage, uh, some, some new services getting announced because uh, the, the way uh, Andy Jassy puts it, I mean, every day when you wake up, there's another three services from Amazon, so it's not like uh, they had to say, oh geez, can we hold something off? You know, I, I go to the typical enterprise show and it's like, oh, we're going to have this bundle of announcements that we do. Amazon could have one of these every week somewhere mm -hmm. and every day could be like, oh, here's three new services and they're kind of interesting because every day that's kind of what they have. Yeah, yeah, so, and I don't mean to paint it like the wolf is at the door yeah. by any means, but, but the competitors are at the door. So, I mean, how much of that factors into this space, you think, right now, that you pointed out, AWS has this huge market share, right? They're, the, they're not even the, the gorilla, they're like the uh, elephant and the gorilla in the room. But at the same time, you do, you got Azure coming on, Google's still out there looking, there's some other players as well. Yeah, well, if you talk to the Amazon people, they don't care about the competitors, they care about their customers, so they focus very, you know, very much on what their customers are doing. They work on really small teams. So, um, you know, if, if we want to talk about a couple of the announcements today, one of the ones that, mm -hmm. at least the community I was watching, uh, is AWS Glue, uh, which really helps uh, to get kind of ETL, which is the extract, transform, and load, really a lot of the heavy lifting and undifferentiated heavy lifting that data scientists are doing. Uh, Matt Wood, who was up on the keynote, mm -hmm. said 75% mm -hmm. of their time is done on this kind of stuff, and here's something that can greatly reduce it. Uh, a few people uh, in, in the Twitter stream were talking about they've used the beta of it. Uh, they're really mm -hmm. excited. It was one that didn't sound all that exciting, but once you get into it, it's like, oh wow, game changer. This is going to free up so much time, really accelerate that, that speed mm -hmm. of what I'm doing. Uh, Adrian Cockroft talked about speed and like flight, freeing me uh, from some of the early constraints. 
uh, you know, I'm an infrastructure guy by background and everything was like, oh, I've got that boat anchor stuff that I need to move along right. and the refresh cycles uh, and what do I have budget for today? And now I could spin things up so much faster. They gave an example of, uh, oh, I'm going to do this on Hive and it's going to take me five years to do it as opposed to if I do it in the nice AWS service, it takes 155 seconds. Right. So, uh, you know, we, we, we've had lots of examples like this. One of the earliest customers uh, I remember talking to, you know, over four years ago, Cycle Computing uh, was like, we would build this supercomputer and it would have taken us two years and, you know, millions of dollars to build, and instead we did the entire project in two months and it cost us $10,000. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of transformational things uh, that we expect to hear from Amazon. Lots of customers, uh, but you know, getting into the nuance of, it's, it's a lot of it's building new service. Hulu got on stage, and it wasn't mm -hmm. that, they didn't mm -hmm. say, we've killed all of our data centers and mm -hmm. everything that you do on Hulu is now in AWS. They said, we wanted to do live TV. Live TV is very different from what we had built for in our infrastructure and the streaming services that Amazon had and the reach and the CDN and everything that they can do there makes it it's so that we could do this much faster and integrate what we were doing before with the live TV, put those things together, transformational, expands their business model, mm -hmm. and helps move forward. Hulu says they're not just a media company, they're a technology company, mm -hmm. and Amazon and Amazon support as a partner helps them uh, with that transformation. Right, so they're changing their mission, obviously, and then technologically they have to help to do that. Part of the, the, the migration hub, AWS migration hub, we talked about that as well, one of those new services that they rolled out today. Uh, I think the, the quote was, migration is a journey, and we're going to make it a little simpler right now. Yeah, I, we, you know, we've been here for the last couple of years, uh, you know, the database. It's, you know, whether I've got Oracle databases, whether we're running uh, you know, SQL before, I want to migrate them, and with Amazon now, I have so many different migration tools that, right, this migration hub now is going to allow me to track all of my migrations across AWS. So this is not for the company that's saying, oh yeah, I'm tinkering with some stuff and I'm doing some test dev, but the enterprise that has you know, thousands of applications or you know, lots of locations and lots of people, um, they now need managers of managers to watch this uh, and you know, some partners involved to help with a lot of these services, but uh, you know, really sprawling uh, all of the services that Amazon have, every time they put up one of those you know, eye charts with just all of these different boxes, every one of them, when you tend to dig in, it's like, oh, you know, machine learning was a category before, and now there's like you know, dozens of things inside right. it. So you, know, you keep drilling down. I feel like it's uh, that Christopher Nolan movie, Inception. You know, we keep going <laughs> levels deep uh, as to, to kind of yeah. figure it out, and yeah. uh, you know, we need to move at cloud time, which is really fast, as opposed to kind of the old enterprise time. We well, hit on machine learning. Um, we saw a lot of examples uh, that I think really cut across a pretty diverse set of, of brands and, and sectors and really the democratization of machine learning more or less. At least that was the takeaway I got from it. Yeah, and, and, and absolutely. Uh, when you mentioned the competition, this is where you know, Google has you know, a, a strong position uh, in machine learning. Amazon uh, you know, uh, and Microsoft also pushing there. So um, it, it is still early days in machine learning, uh, and while Amazon has you know, an undisputed lead in overall cloud, uh, machine learning is one of those areas where everybody's starting from kind of uh, the, you know, the starting point, and Amazon's brought in a lot of really good people. They've got a lot of people working on teams and building out new services. Uh, the one that was announced at the end of the keynote is Amazon Macy, uh, right. which is really around uh, you know, my, uh, my sensitive data uh, in a global ton context using machine learning to understand uh, when something's being used when it shouldn't uh, and things like that. Like, you know, I, I was buying my family some subway tickets and you, know, you could only buy two Metro cards with one credit card because it, you know, even when, if I put in all the data, it was like, no, we're only going to let you buy two because you know, if somebody got your credit card, they could probably get that and do that. So hmm. that, that's the kind of things that you're trying to act fast uh, with data no matter where you are because uh, you know, <laughs> malicious people and hackers, uh, you know, data uh, is you know, the new oil as we said, it, it's something that we need to watch and uh, you know, be able to manage even better. Uh, so you know, Amazon keeps adding tools and services uh, to allow us to use our data, protect our data, uh, and harness the value of data uh, I've, I've really said, you know, data is the new flywheel uh, for uh, you know, technology going forward. Uh, Amazon for years talked about the flywheels of customers. Uh, they add new services, more customers come on board, that drives new services, and now data is really that next flywheel that's going to drive that next uh, you know, bunch of years of innovation to come. You know, we, we, you've talked a lot about announcements that we just heard about in the keynote. 
big announcement fairly recently about the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, yeah. right? So all of a sudden, you know, they've been not not I'd say not giving the Heisman, if you will, to Kubernetes, but but maybe not embracing it, right? Fair enough to say. Different story now. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're platinum level on the board. They have a voice on how Kubernetes is going to be rolled out going forward. Or I guess maybe how Kubernetes is going to be working with with AWS going forward. Yeah. Well, uh, and. My, my comment, I gave a quote to Silicon Angle, or, you know, I'm on the analyst side, the media uh, side had, had written an article and I said, it's a good step. Uh, I saw a great uh, headline that was like, uh, Amazon gives you know, $350,000 and so they're at least you know, contributing with a financial piece, but uh, when you dig in and read that, there's a Medium blog post written by Adrian Cockroft. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't touch on it at all in the keynote this morning, which I was a little surprised about, mm -hmm. um, but uh, what he said is, you know, we're contributing, uh, we're greatly involved, and there's all of these things that are happening in the CNCF, um, but Amazon has not said, and here is our service uh, to enable you know, Kubernetes as a first class citizen in there. Uh, they have the AWS container service, which is ACS, which doesn't use Kubernetes. Uh, until this recent news, I could layer Kubernetes on top, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of offerings to do that. Uh, what I'd like to be able to hear is, you know, what, what service is really Amazon going to offer with that? Mm -hmm. uh, my expectation, not knowing any you know, you know, concrete details, is by the time we get to the, the big show in November, uh, they will have that baked out more, probably have some announcements there, uh, you know, hoping to, at this show to be able to talk to some people to really find out what's happening inside. Uh, really that Kubernetes piece, because that helps not only with really migrations, mm -hmm. uh, if, I, if I have, uh, if I'm built with Kubernetes, it's, it's built with containers. Uh, containers are also the underlying component uh, when I'm doing uh, things like serverless, uh, AWS Lambda. So if I can use Kubernetes, I, I can build one way and do uh, and use multiple environments, whether that be public clouds or private clouds. So how much will Amazon embrace that? How much will they use this as, well, we're enabling Kubernetes, so if you've got a Kubernetes solution, you can now get into another migration service mm -hmm. uh, to Amazon, or will they open up a little bit more? Uh, we've really been watching to see as Amazon builds out their hybrid cloud offering, which says how do they get into the customer's data center, because we, we've seen that maturation of public cloud only, everything into the public cloud to uh, now Lambda starts to reach out a little bit uh, with the green grass, they've got their snowballs, uh, they've got the partnership with VMware, which we expect to hear lots more about at VMworld at the end of this month. They've got partnerships with Red Hat and a whole lot of other companies that they're working at to really expanding how they get the, all of these wonderful Amazon services that are in the public cloud, you know, how do they reach their, into uh, the, the customer's data centers themselves. Uh, and start leveraging those services. All of those three services a day that are getting added. Uh, lots of companies would want to get access to them. Well, uh, full lineup of guests, as always. Great lineup of guests, but before we, we head out, I mean, you, as you said, you're with Wikibon, you do great analyst work there, and you've got that inquiring mind, right? You're a curious guy. What are you curious about today? What do you, what do you kind of want to walk away from here tonight learning a little bit more about? Yeah, so, so uh, as I mentioned, the, the whole Kubernetes story absolutely right. is uh, one, one that we want to hear about. Um, going to talk to a lot of the, the, the partners. So we've seen a lot of the analytics, machine learning uh, type solutions really getting to the public cloud. So it's good to get a pulse of really this ecosystem because uh, while Amazon is, uh, we, we said it's not only the elephant in the room, uh, Dave Vellante, uh, you know, the, the right. chief analyst from Wikibon said, they're, they're the cheetah, they move really fast, <laughs> and they're really nimble. Right. Um, yes. Amazon, not the easiest always to partner with. So, mm -hmm. you know, how, how's, the, how's the room feel? How the customers, how are the partners, uh, how much are they, you know, really in on AWS, how many of them are now multi-cloud and I'm using you know, Google for some of the data solutions and you know, Microsoft apps really have me involved. Uh, so Amazon loves to say people that are all in. Uh, we had uh, uh, one of the speakers uh, that, that talked, uh, ZocDoc, which was one that uh, allows me to set appointments with doctors much faster which using technology. We all like, analytics. Right, yeah. say rather than 24 days, you can do it in 24 hours. They went 
from no AWS to fully 100% in on AWS in less than 12 months. So those are really impressive ones. Uh, obviously, it's a technology-centric company, uh, but you know you see large companies. FICO was the other one up on stage. I'm actually hoping to have FICO on the, on the program today. Uh, that they are, what was it, like, you know, over a 60-year-old company, so obviously they have a lot of legacy and how AWS fits into their environment. I'd actually interviewed someone from FICO a couple of years ago at an OpenStack show talking about their embrace of containers, uh, and containers allows them to get you know, into public cloud a little bit easier, so I'd love to kind of dig into those pieces. So, you know, what's the pulse of the customers? What's the pulse of the partner ecosystem? Um, and, you know, are there chinks in the armor? You mentioned the competitive uh, piece there. Usually when you come to an Amazon show, it's all Amazon all the time. Uh, the number one gripe usually is, it's kind of pricing, mm -hmm. um, and Amazon's made some moves. That, uh, we were, uh, uh, did a bunch of interviews the week of the Google Next event, uh, talking about Google Cloud, and there was a lot of kind of the small medium business that said Google is priced better, Google has a clear advantage, if I'm an SMB, uh, you know, I'm going away from Amazon. The week after the show, Amazon changed their pricing, talked to some of the same people, and they're like, yeah, Amazon leveled the playing field. So Amazon listens and moves very fast. So if they're not the first to create an offering, they will spin something up very fast. They can readjust their security, their pricing, uh, to, to make sure that they are listening to their customers and meeting them, um, not necessarily in response to competitors, but you know, getting what the customers need, and therefore if the customers are griping a little bit about something that they see that's interesting, um, or a pain point that they've had, uh, like we talked about the uh, AWS glue, wasn't something that, oh, a competitor had, it was that you know, this is a pain point that they saw a lot of time is on it, and they are looking to take that pain out. One of the, you know, line that always gets quotes about Amazon is they say, you know, your margin is our opportunity, and your pain as a customer is our opportunity too. Right, right. So Amazon always listens. All right, a lot on the plate here. This uh, day we have for you at AWS Summit. We'll be back with much more as we continue here on theCUBE at AWS Summit 2017 from New York City.